Part 2. The Library of Congress American Memory Website In Part 1, you learned how to access the Library of Congress, our nation's largest library, for your research projects. You also watched how to browse the Library of Congress American Memory Collection. It holds records of history and creativity. In this episode, learn how to search this collection and how to read a photograph closely, a skill that you can apply when reading images of film, television, and even personal observation in the field. Again, to access the Library of Congress, go to lfc.gov and click on the American Memory box. Notice that I will search this American Memory section of the library, not the whole library. I've come to this collection because I'm seeking photographs, speeches, and other documents for my topic. Take a moment and think. Would your project benefit from sources such as photographs, maps, speeches, and other creative documents? Like some of your topics, mine is about local history. My topic is this. I want to know more about the Chinese community's history in Boise. As you may know, Chinese individuals contributed greatly to Boise's development. My first strategy, of course, is to search local libraries and museums that have records. Now I want to see if the Library of Congress has pictures about my topic. To search all collections within the American Memory site, I'll type Chinese and my second keyword, Boise, in the search function. Okay, this looks promising. The first entry is titled Boise, Idaho Chinese, parading on Capitol Boulevard. That's very familiar in terms of location. Number two, the Saxonians. I'm not sure if that will apply to my project. Number three, Territory of Idaho. So here's an item from the Territory of Idaho. So when Idaho is not even a state, it's from the Executive Department. That means the governor. And it's a proclamation. So he's making a proclamation. and It's, it, it's about this topic, forbidding forcible expulsion of the Chinese after a particular date. So he's saying, you know, don't make any of the Chinese move away um, against their will. Obviously, they were having some problems with this, so he came out and uh, made a proclamation for their rights. If we scroll down, we'll see some other items. I don't see anything that would work with my topic for the rest of the items. Let's go back to number three, and then we'll look at number one. Okay, this is from an American time capsule. This is a collection, uh, three centuries of broadside and other printed ephemera. Ephemera is a term for pamphlets, leaflets, other little extra records, and in this case, the proclamation that we'll take a look at. And here it is. Someone has scanned this in for the library. And the governor is saying that there were numerous organizations that have, have formed or are now forming for the purpose of expelling by force and violence the Chinese who may be found in these localities. He is uh, making a ruling against that. He says the life and property of our citizens and those of the Chinese as well who are engaged in peaceful occupations are entitled to receive equal protection of the law. So he goes on and talks about you know any persons now pursuing peaceful labor uh, should be protected and it's signed on April 27, 1886 in Boise City, Edward A. Stevenson, Governor. Here's the entry for Boise, Idaho Chinese parading on Capitol Boulevard. Now this is from another collection. It's the History of the American West. It's from the Denver Public Library. This is a picture. It's created between 1905 and 1910. Now let's think about this. The last item that we took a look at was a proclamation in 1886 for the protection of the Chinese rights. Obviously they're still here and not only that, they are uh, conducting a parade and they are possibly, it looks like, part of the community. Let's look at the summary. It says Chinese men march in a parade on Capitol Boulevard in Boise, Idaho. They carry staffs decorated with metal ornaments and a cloth dragon. The partially constructed state capitol building is in the distance. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Here's a note. It says, title and note construction of capital handwritten on back of map board. So someone had written on the back of this, this map board of this photograph, you know, please note that the capital is being constructed. If we scroll down, we'll see other source information, the size of the photograph, re reproduction number, and other information from the Denver Public Library. 
This might be important to write down. Um, you want to to write down as much information as possible and look at a handbook if you're using MLA or APA to see uh, what information you need to record regarding a photograph. Let's click on the image and then uh, take a look at it further. And here is Boise. Take a moment to jot down what you see. Practice analyzing a photograph closely. What do you see in the foreground? the background, the sides. Note the action, the street. What is different from today's Capitol Boulevard? What remains? Pause this recording if you wish. Here are some of the things that I see in the photograph. Uh, first of all, I note that the photograph is a black and white photo and it doesn't look to be like a sunny day we don't see sharp shadows it's a little hard to tell what time of day it is but it seems to be somewhat cloudy I notice the colors even though it's in black and white we have shades of gray um, the Chinese individuals are wearing a lighter color the bystanders are wearing a darker color uh, the Chinese individuals are holding the staffs and and the uh, cloth dragon I notice in the background the Capitol building. This is the rotunda still being built. This seems some, like some sort of building with perhaps a, um, a sign at the top. I notice these telephone or telegraph poles. This photograph is taken between 1905 and 1910, so I'm not sure if it's a telephone or telegraph pole. We see some sort of scaffolding here for the rotunda this turret looks familiar it's the turret right above the Starbucks that we have today I'm interested now to go back to today's Capitol Boulevard and see how many of these buildings are still standing this is the same building that is still standing I also notice here is a team of horses and perhaps a carriage we see more bystanders here I also notice these are uh, Chinese men you know, in the summary, it said Chinese men marching on parade, um, and so uh, I'm curious to know why there aren't Chinese women. That would be something I might want to research. Finally, I notice that there seems to be some sort of curbing already constructed on the boulevard, perhaps sidewalks. So it looks like a lot was going on in Boise at this time. So right here on the Library of Congress site, we find an old photograph of Boise. I've learned a lot about Idaho history. I hope you have too. I still have more questions and that could actually help me narrow my topic. I want to know were there primarily Chinese men instead of women in, in Idaho at this time. And I also want to know what made the difference between the 1880s uh, when the governor had to proclaim or wanted to proclaim protection for Chinese rights to 1905 when we have a celebration of, of Chinese in a parade in the community. Review. In Parts 1 and 2, you watched how to access, browse, search, and analyze material located online in the Library of Congress, and in particular in its American Memory Collection. Please go to your course Blackboard site to take the self-test.